In 1983, Doctor Who's 20th anniversary was marked by a 90-minute special episode that attempted to put all of the Doctors into one adventure. One day, I shall come back. Along with an assortment of companions and a few returning villains. Together, we're a match for you. Try and see how many people you can cram into an old Volkswagen Beetle, yet still be able to drive the car safely on the motorway. Doctor Who, The Five Doctors. <laughs> That's yes? uh, Colonel Crichton, uh, my replacement. Ah. <laughs> yes, mine was pretty unpromising too. After 20 years, it was time for the Doctor to treat himself to a new TARDIS console, one that actually has buttons and working computer monitors, rather than just crammed with the lids of jam jars and vacuum cleaner parts. The new console has all of the streaming services, but the Doctor can't get BBC iPlayer without a VPN. The Doctor has taken Tegan and Turlo to vacation at a little spot called the Eye of Orion. It's rather tranquil and peaceful, but the downside is there's only one dodgy cafe and only two TV stations, and both of them are weather channels. Meanwhile, a mysterious figure is using a device called a Time Scoop to kidnap previous incarnations of the Doctor and his companions in order to bring them to the death zone on Gallifrey. How can you be so sure? Well, the tomb of Rassilon. In between kidnapping doctors, companions and monsters, the shadowy figure gets in a few rounds of missile command. Oh, the doctor. Yes, that's right. Wonderful chap. All of them. The Death Zone is a place where ancient Gallifreyans pitted captured beings against each other for amusement. It's only slightly similar to I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, but without Colin Baker. The first Doctor is reunited with his now grown-up granddaughter, Susan. Well, the important question now is, where are we and why? And the pair of them face off against a Dalek. The second Doctor gate crashes a unit reunion and is captured along with Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. You attract trouble, Doctor. You always did. The third Doctor was just driving along in Bessie when they nabbed him. That's it. Sarah Jane Smith ignores the advice of Canine Mark III and is caught while trying to catch a bus. Speaking of buses, poor Sarah Jane hasn't seen the Doctor in years and then wham, four of them at once. The fourth Doctor and Romana are captured while punting on the River Cam, but something goes wrong and they're trapped in the vortex of contractual workarounds. The High Council of the Time Lords know something's up and their best idea is just to send the Master into the Death Zone to try and help the Doctor. A cosmos without the Doctor scarcely bears thinking about. Because of course that wouldn't be seen as remotely suspicious by the Doctor. I've never heard such arrant nonsense. Like Alice, I tried to believe three impossible things before breakfast. I knew this was going to be difficult, but I didn't realise that even you would be so stupid as to make it impossible. The first and fifth Doctor meet and formulate a plan to free the TARDIS by one of them heading to the Dark Tower. You're talking nonsense, my boy. We must send the signal as planned and wait for the others. No, there's no time. We must leave immediately. En route, the fifth Doctor meets the Master who tries unsuccessfully to convince the Doctor of his good intentions, but instead cops shrapnel from a cyberblast before the Doctor uses the Master's escape route to transmit back to the President's office. Good thing it was a recall device and not a remote to open the garage door. The various doctors face many trials to reach Rassilon's tomb in the tower. One team goes in through the basement, one team ziplines down to the top of the tower, and the first doctor and Tegan just go in through the front door by pretending to be collecting for charity. The doctor and Sarah do face a new creation, the Raston warrior robot, who manages to destroy an entire squad of Cybermen without a single one of them firing back. The Master also destroys another squad of particularly gullible Cybermen. But even then, there are more of the Silver Buggers trying to blow up the TARDIS. So when we say old enemies, we really mean lots and lots and lots of really thick Cybermen, as well as a single Yeti, a solitary Raston Warrior robot, and a Dalek. A solo Dalek. It was 20 years ago today.
Turlow doesn't get too much of anything to do apart from work on his side hustle, selling surplus computer parts at car boot sales, swap meets, flea markets, or on Gumtree, Craigslist, Rogers List, and Friends List. Here he tries to convince Susan of the advanced graphics capabilities of an ex TARDIS computer. I've reversed the polarity of the neutron flow so the TARDIS should be free of the force field now. And it turns out it was the doctor's old mentor and now president of the High Council of Time Lords, Barusa. He wants immortality and rule forever. Well, didn't see that one coming. He knew very well that immortality was a curse, not a blessing. <sighs> Producer John Nathan Turner wanted to do something special for the show's 20th anniversary, November 23rd, 1983. Who might you be? I might be any number of things, young lady. As it happens, I am the doctor. The original, you might say. In one of the last times the BBC in the 80s showed any confidence in Doctor Who, they greenlit an extra 90-minute special to be made after the show's 20th season wrapped. Nathan Turner had hoped to get all of the Doctors in the show and a bunch of companions and villains. Of course, it was similar to installing a moat in an apartment building. It's easier said than done. What is it I've got to do? Script editor Eric Sayward had persuaded John Nathan Turner to commission Doctor Who's best regarded writer, Robert Holmes, to write the script despite Nathan Turner's reticence to hire people from before his time on the show. Holmes set to work with a list of requirements of characters to include and began fashioning a story initially called The Six Doctors before eventually holding up his hands and recusing himself. Data analysis shows too many variables. Knowing they'd set Holmes a difficult task, they also sounded out another Doctor Who legend. Terence Dix hadn't written many televised stories, but had been the show's longest serving script editor, and of course had also written the bulk of the target novelizations of Doctor Who stories. He'd apparently been approached while Holmes was still involved, but wasn't willing to commit until after Holmes had left the project. Dix set to work with an equally long laundry list of who to include, but one that changed daily, based on people dropping out and others becoming available. As easy as pie. As easy as pie. Just as nailing down a speaker list at the International Conference for Indecisive People was difficult, The Five Doctors was proving to be a logistics nightmare. Terence Dix, the pro that he was, managed to assemble a fairly modular script that would work even with many of the participants in play. Isn't anyone going to wish me luck? We wish you success. Straight off the bat, the most obvious problem was that William Hartnell, who'd played the first Doctor, had long since passed away. And the most obvious solution was to recast the part with someone who could sort of evoke the spirit of the first Doctor. Richard Herndl had played a character that wore a wig similar to that worn by Hartnell in an episode of Blake 7. So he was cast, since he was A, available, B, a good actor, and C, well, the BBC already had the wig. Everything's all right. Everything's quite all right. <laughs> and then the real unexploded bomb detonated. Well, metaphorically speaking, anyway. Tom Baker had decided to bow out of the project entirely, despite earlier talk about doing the show and his doctor having a plum role. There have been many reasons cited as to why Baker pulled out. He didn't want to share the limelight with other actors, he'd had a difficult working relationship with JNT, and he'd only recently left the role and was finding TV work hard to come by in the UK thanks to his association with the program. Either way, Tom Baker was out. I am being diminished, whittled away piece by piece. To recast one Doctor was understandable, but to recast two might look like carelessness. Too many recast roles would look less like a Doctor Who special and more like a Halloween party. Fortunately, there was footage from the unfinished Tom Baker story, Sharda, which had been cancelled after a strike halfway through the production of the final story of the 17th season. Tom Baker with Lala Ward would make a brief appearance after all. Tom Baker's absence in the publicity photographs was mitigated by borrowing a waxwork replica to pose with the actors who did show up. On the plus side, the waxwork version of Tom Baker, hereafter known as Wom Waker, knew his lines, found his marks, didn't once complain about the script or yell at the director or marry any companions. 
Baker's absence meant other companions were rejigged. Sarah Jane Smith would now move back one and be paired with a third doctor, and the brigadier likewise would now appear with the second doctor. The first doctor would show up with his now grown up granddaughter, though still played by Carol Ann Ford. And of course, you had the current TARDIS crew, led by Peter Davison. The narrative Jenga of the story seemed to settle down a bit, and now they could just make the damn thing. Yes, it, it was really nice meeting you. Thank you, Sarah Jane. It's nice meeting you too. Hmm? Director Peter Moffat managed to tie together all of the disparate elements in a fast-moving and tightly made show. Producer John Nathan Turner directed a second unit filming the Raston Warrior robot's utter wrecking of a squad of Cybermen. I'm definitely not the man I was. Thank goodness. The Five Doctors is one of the better made shows of the Peter Davison era but it was a story that demonstrated just how much judicious editing could make or break a production. Years later, in the mid-90s, a special edition of the story was released on home video with updated special effects, extended or alternate takes, Your orders are to move back. Short scenes that had originally been trimmed for a very good reason were reinstated. The taut but simple story was now a flabby mess, like Jabba the Hutt after his divorce. You've had this place redecorated, haven't you? Hmm, don't like it. As originally televised, it's not especially layered or deep, but it's a solid show. Do I know you, young man? Believe it or not, we were at the Academy together. The Doctors kept separate for so long works for and against the story. It gave them all a chance to do their thing, with John Pertwee and Patrick Troughton slipping back into their roles with ease. Of course, that means we didn't get much of them actually together, sniping at each other like former band members. What's happened to the little fellow? The little fellow is perfectly all right, thank you very much. It's not perfect, of course. You are authorized to use the mind probe. What? No, not the mind probe. But what can you do? Is he really? Me? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, regeneration. Fourth. Goodness me, so there are five of me now. If like a bird cleaning themselves you really want to nitpick, The Five Doctors tosses away a few opportunities for characters to interact with each other in ways other than purely servicing the story. Sarah Jane never beefs with the Doctor for dumping her in the wrong part of town. And think about poor Susan. After many years of not even getting a Christmas card from Grandpa, Susan is reunited with the man who abandoned her on the side of a river. I've double locked the doors, you can't get in. Then meets three other versions of her grandfather who more or less ignore her. Oh, uh, 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 this is Susan. Yes, I know. That's cold, Doctor. The Doctor may have two hearts, but ice runs in their veins. No, no, you changed. Remember? You, you became all, uh, um... Uh, Teeth and curls? Yes. Yes, and maybe I did, but I haven't yet. Oh, I see. No, I don't. The Five Doctors features one of my all-time favourite scores for a Doctor Who story. Composer Peter Howe would quote the Doctor Who theme and use a sample of the horn from the Queen Mary to represent the Dark Tower. As a score, it ties together the story really well. <laughs> The special ends with a version of the 1963 arrangement of the theme tune merging into the 1980 arrangement by Peter Howell. The Five Doctors was technically a co-production with the ABC in Australia, but unfortunately they asked the BBC not to cash the cheque until the 25th. The Five Doctors actually screened in the US first on November 23rd, as the BBC decided to hold the special back a few days to screen it as part of a telethon. American fandom had exploded in the early 80s, like ramblers hiking in a minefield. Packages of Tom Baker episodes shown on public television had found large numbers of fans who would attend massive conventions, conventions with appearance fees that managed to attract many people who'd worked on the show, much to the chagrin of UK convention organisers whose conventions had to make do with whoever had a morbid fear of flying. BBC Enterprises presents the Doctor Who figurine collection. There are the companions, Tegan, Tolo, Sarah, Susan and the Brigadier. Then there's the Master and the Doctor. And wait, another Doctor. Oh no, another Doctor. Oh my God. Oh, for goodness sake, Cecil, calm the f*** down. They're all the Doctors. It would be ever so lovely if you could possibly consider collecting them all. Do you expect me to believe the fantastic tale you've just told? To get personal for a moment, 
The Five Doctors merits its own video for several reasons. But for me, this is the story where Doctor Who went from being one of the shows I really enjoyed watching as a young'un to a show that I most enjoyed watching. Before Five Doctors, the only other thing I considered myself a fan of, even at that age, was Star Wars. But now I was also a Doctor Who fan. I watched The Five Doctors over and over, poured through the Radio Time special it was released wherever good books are sold, as well as outlets that sold Jeffrey Archer books. It set me on a path to collect novelizations, non-fiction books, and videos. And yada yada yada, decades later, here we are. You mean you're deliberately choosing to go on the run from your own people in a rackety old TARDIS? Why not? After all, that's how it all started. Despite The Five Doctors being my most watched serial, I still love watching it. Its main flaw is that I wanted more of it, which is probably a good sign that those involved did a good job. You tell them. Next year, Doctor Who would reach 21. It would be a season of change. One that would end with first a bang and then a dull plop. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below or check out some of our other videos. If you love, you can look and you will find me. Time after time. If you fall, I will catch you. I will be waiting. Time at a time If you're lost you can look and you will find me Time at a time